Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. It's fairly early in the morning, about 8.15, and I'm arriving at an auction house here to take a look at a Atlas lathe that they'll have up for sale. I don't need one, but I'm always interested in uh, taking a look to see if there's any accessories or anything else that I can use. So here we are pulling in already a fair number of people here. Auction doesn't start for about a full hour. There supposedly is about 20, not 20, uh, 10 rack loads of tools. Here's the craftsman lathe. What's that? Here's an old drill press. Oh, that's a cheap Sears companion brand. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm going to look over some of the goods here, but there will be no audio with us. Coming out of Ed McAlpine's shop garage over there on the west side of Ottawa. Handy little size, and here it is. And then down there, we got a nice lay. And then down there, 715, 7, I have 500. I have 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 60. Spring is finally here. This is the first tractor I've seen in the field tilling. And it's April April 22nd. That's really late for Illinois. Often some of the planting is done by now. I'm finally back home and this trunk load represents one hundred and eighty dollars and I will be going through every box methodically and slowly and pleasurefully okay it's the next day I was getting anxious to get this stuff unpacked and look through some of these flats that I really don't know what was all in there but uh, if this seems like a bragging session please just turn it off but I went to this auction because there was a lathe and uh, you'll see that sell. I didn't buy it. I had no intentions of buying it, but there were many other machine shop items there. And in fact, I ended up with some of the things that belonged with the lathe. You know, uh, things get separated uh, at an auction and it all should have gone with the lathe, but it didn't. I was indeed number 71 and I bought this Craftsman. Uh, toolbox. I had a nice wooden one too and it just sold for about 50 bucks but uh, this is empty except for some junk. Now I've got enough of these craftsmen and I prefer the Kennedy but uh, it's still a nice box and there's nothing in the top uh, except a few pieces of junk. They empty everything out of these boxes and put it into flats. So what's, let's see what's in these uh, drawers if anything now. These uh, look to be just uh, homemade transfer punches whether or not they're hard they must be hard that's a dowel pen and that's been ground so there might be some good transfer punches in there in larger sizes than what I have in my set so I'll go through those and decide what I want to keep and what is scrap at my leisure here Nothing. well yeah there is here's a little uh, cheap ruler six inch and a Fishtail, who made that? American Caliper Company. I actually never heard of that. Feeler gauge, some hones. Over here on this side, quite a few uh, drill bits. Some of which look pretty good. Some are steps. Also, it looks like about half a dozen reamers of various sizes. Some have been cut off. That'll be handy to have those cut off ones. All right, so there's $15 worth of drill bits there. A flat bottom. All right, that's good. Some balls and nothing. 
strictly junk. A brass tweezers. <laughs> and a few needle files. Scissors. And a Lufkin protractor. Alright. Not bad for $15. A, a few good items in there. Alright, let's move to the better stuff. I know that in the past I've been too quick to throw things out just as I unpack it because sometimes people identify things that I wish I hadn't thrown out. But here is a proto uh, puller. I have a lot of proto pullers, but here's one with uh, two jaws, two sets of jaws in good shape. It is used, some kind of brass deal there, so that's not bad. Oh, these are, these belong on the proto uh, legs. You know what? That cross piece is missing, isn't it? The crisscross piece is missing. Fortunately, I have a bunch of proto stuff, and I have one of those, but maybe it's in here someplace. Who knows? There's a brand new eighth inch long bit. Another set of screwdrivers, a jeweler screwdriver, a Vaco stripper, that's no good. There is a, almost looks like a Mac, but it's not, but there is none better. Putting screens in, putty knives, uh, rat tail file, all kinds of what looks like cheap looking screwdrivers. Screwdriver bits in a secret box, channel lock, that's all ground up, that's junk, craftsman, side cutter, some flip-flop zigzag rulers, oh boy, that's some real junk, there's a craftsman three-quarter, bunch of these spade bits, a little Ground craftsman. All right, nothing real great here, but it, I think this is just like a two or three dollar box. Piece of brass. All right, let's move to the next one. No great finds, and a dis disappointment with that proto. I can't always remember what I paid for a box, but this is probably a five or six dollar box, and I don't know what that is. But there's a nice. Excuse me. Craftsman impact tool. With some bits. That's a good one. I've got several of those, but you tend to break the bits off, so that's worth it for the bits alone. There's an Armstrong wrench. Now these parts again should should have been with the lay. There's a woodworking center, a dead center. A lathe dog, but boy, that's beat up and ground. That's kind of a nice uh, GB pliers. Those are kind of expensive diagonals. Left hand turning tool, along with the lathe. I don't know why there's an R8 collet because he had no milling machine. Uh, there's a 1730 seconds. I do not know, I've never seen a tool holder that would not fit in the Atlas lathe. It has a hole there. I do not see a name on it such as Armstrong. I'll clean that up, maybe it is marked. And some homemade fly cutters. Notice that there was Woodruff cutter, good one. There was a, a milling attachment Therefore, there are some milling parts here, and the milling attachment sold for $85. That'll sh you'll see that in the beginning uh, clips. There's a Jacob's chuck. I don't know what kind of weird shank he's got on there, but that might be a usable chuck if I take that shank off. Next box, please. Sometimes a couple boxes are shoved together in the auction because I wouldn't have bid on something like this. I don't know what that is, but there's a milling arbor. Probably homemade, and the cutter is no good. 
some lacing. Now here's a set of Sears brand chisels, but these are not Craftsman, so this is, I regard those as total junk, if it doesn't say Craftsman on it. I like these T-handles, although they are used. Now that's what a Craftsman looks like, although it's beat. There's a tap wrench, but I think it's homemade. I don't know, that's scrap. Jigsaw blades. Not a good box. I'm glad I really didn't pay for it. Some of you that can't get to auctions or you do not have auctions in your area are able to uh, go to auctions vicariously by what I'm doing here. Now here's kind of a worthless box. A True Value Snips. A... Uh, a master Mechanic Aviation Steps. I hope that's sharp because I can use one of those. This is a KD tool, I believe, for bending tubing such as brake line. I did never use it. I thought I just had one of these. I like this. I've had some of these before. It's a Bartlett Compound Action Snips. I've seen these in the larger size. Matter of fact, I think I still got one. But I've never seen one in this size. I had these at the high school also. Because for a junior high kid who didn't have much strength in his hand, it gave him a lot of leverage in cutting sheet metal. Oh, I don't know how many of these flaring tools I've got, and I haven't flared anything in, uh, besides my nostrils in many a year. Here's a cat paw. Beat the heck out of it. A Vaughn, though. Vaughns are good. And I think we all know that's a muffler chisel, but kind of beat up. A couple things for uh, grease guns. Not a good box. Long tap. I've got the auction tickets here, but sometimes it's hard for me to pair up what it says on here compared to the boxes that I got. But this one I paired up, it is $17.50. There's a nice strap, but I think it's only a half of it. I believe there needs to be another one, so that's probably junk. But you can see why I bought this. A couple nice chucks. There's a half-inch Jacobs. Possibly seen little or no use. There's another one. It looks okay, but it's got a straight shank on it, apparently homemade. But these gears and this stuff should have gone with the Atlas lathe, as you can see. There's a part of a bull nose. Uh, center, live center, I don't see the shank. Maybe I'll run into it. I hope I do. So I could use that. Spur center, number two. There's a number three center. Does not look good at all. But, look at this. Here are gears. One, two, three. These are Zamac gears. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gears. Now that lathe did not have a quick change gearbox on it, as I remember, so that person would need those, but who knows even who that is. Here's some stuff I do not recognize. Scrap metal. Apparently he had made some... Uh, Arbors. There's another left hand tool holder. You know, why would somebody keep something like that? And the spacers for the gears. Now, please do not ask me out there in La La Land to. Uh, if I want to sell, I, I really have nothing to sell. Now, he's made some boring bars here. That's not bad. But piece of high speed steel. So this was a nice box. Did I say I paid $17.50 for it or not? I did. Here's Craftsman Torch Kit, uh, a full canister, a good striker, and then all the accessories here, but no actual torch. But I don't care. I like the Burns Matic uh, self igniting one. But so that's pretty much scrap. Those look like extra orifices there. Throw that box away. Okay, um, I don't have quite enough hacksaw frames. Boy, that looks like a, a piece of junk there. But here's one that is 
Well, it says Atkins. Never heard of it. It, may, it is made in the USA. I might keep that. Asteric. Two and three eighths. And here we got some taps. They are used, but they're quarter inch. Look like they're all quarter inch. And another box here. Some of those might be new. They look like five sixteenths and three eighths. Boy, that's worth the price of admission right there. Some duct tape if it's not ruined by the sun. Door closer. And this, I was going to leave that on the auction wagon. The only reason I took that is that this is the first camera that I ever had. I bought it at Kunkel's Drug Store in downtown Peru. I had to save for weeks to buy that thing. It must have been like 1956. <laughs> you could take about 12 pictures with it in black and white. How archaic is that? I think I paid 10 or 12 dollars for this box. And it, obviously this was dumped out of one of the drawers of that uh, Kennedy chest craftsman chest, but here is a union tool thread pitch gauge. Looks good. Here's another thread pitch gauge. Uh, that's a Sterrett, older one. Bunch of these easy outs. Hope I never have to remove another broken screw. Wing divider, what kind? True value. Compasses, there's some cheap looking calipers. Uh, I hope some of these are name brand. That this is can't read it. That's a cheap looking one. There's kind of a neat one. A little bit stiff. Compasses, a lot of compasses. I'll throw those away. I don't want to throw. Reminds me of being in eighth grade. Lots of Allen wrenches here, and they dig down the bottom. There's another fishtail. That's a brown and sharp. And this little uh, ruler here, Lufkin, goes on a, uh, a very small Lufkin square. And some drill bushings. That's good. I, I need drill bushings. Several of these. A few good things here. Not a whole lot, but this is kind of a nice box. That's what I find exciting. You know what I forgot to tell you when I was going through that box with the gears, you know, pretty much everybody rejected my idea of 3D printed gears for the Apple today, so I guess I'm lucky I got some Zamac ones in uh, back stock. Now, the reason I bought this rather worthless uh, box, old screwdrivers, and, is that uh, there was a double-ended uh, crescent wrench here. And it's missing uh, the screw. So this is the 8 inch size, but this is the old now. This is crescent, not crest alloy. So I need to find an 8 inch in this thicker type. So when I do, I got a double ender. But I had to pay 8 bucks for this box of junk. And I don't see anything else in here that's any good other than maybe this thread file. A bunch of wrenches here that are really no good. And under it, another box. And this might be a fairly good box. Don't know what I paid for it. There's a coin purse with no coins, but it's got uh, some Allen wrenches. Balls, all kinds of balls. Uh, here's feeler gauge. A couple of uh, nice rulers here. Let's see what they are. That's a brown and sharp in tenths. Here's a looks like a sterret uh, somebody cut off. Dunlap, that's no good. Well here's another one. Obviously been cut off because it starts at two. Sterret why would somebody have cut those off? Or did they break? And there's a nice sterret in also in tenths. 
a lot of junk, a lot of feeler gauges, hones, punch, mainly scrap, there's another hone. You know, I, I throw away center punches when they get stubby like that. But some people can't part with things, there's a chisel. Imagine keeping something like that, it almost saddens me when I think about it. Well, here's another. Hey, there's the other end. And it is broken. Now, I've never broken a ruler in my life. How could that happen? I suppose it gets caught in the machine. But I would throw that away. High-speed steel. 7 16 drill. Some lead. Yet another ruler, Pioneer. That's some store brand. Probably mainly junk here, other than those balls and a few things that I showed you. Here's a nice box, but I think I paid dearly for it. Uh, a general brand scriber with a good point on it. Hasn't been banged around. Here is uh, Acme gauge made by Sterrett. A nice protractor craftsman, though, it's not. It's a craftsman, but perfect shape. No other heads, just just that. Homemade tap wrench, I believe. There's a couple drill gauges, but they're homemade, so I'm, I'm disappointed at that. Oh. Lots of long drill bits. I mean lots of them. Most of them look good on the end. You know, that one's blue, so I mean, somebody just burnt the heck out of it. I think I'll put all those long ones together. I guess that's it on the long one. Uh, there's a cobbled up one. Somebody welded. I don't like any of those that are welded, but obviously there was a special need for that. But in the tubes here we got, uh, well there's a nice, that's just a drill bit. Another one. Modified shanks. Again, I'll cut those modified shanks off. There's a nice reamer. Half inch. So there's quite a few reamers in here. Bunch of counter sinks. I hope they're not all dull. Six flute. Those don't chatter so much. A lot of counter sinks. Some little ones. Taper pin reamers, an end mill, three flute, maybe dull, I don't know, till I examine them. There's a brand new two to three. Oh, another one. So there's two brand new ones. Two to three made in England. Yeah, they're both made in England, so they should be good quality. Here's another one of these thread files, brand new. So. And yet another one. So there's two thread files in the box. I hope one's coarse and one's fine, I don't know. Hey, there's a scriber. You, you usually don't see those. Those are normally lost. All right, that's a, that's a nice box. I just hope that all of these tools are not dull. There's a, or it appears to be a perfect reamer. So the reamers alone, I think, are worth what I paid for the box, I'm sure. You know, that would be $15 if you had to buy it, I suppose. Nice box. Well, I think you can imagine that this box caught my attention almost immediately on the hay rack. And uh, can you see why? Because everything in here is, well, there's some wire, pretty much junk. There's a hook and a hone. But yes, the Sterrett box. But I had to give $8 for this box. But here it is. A Stanley 270 taper gauge, apparently brand new, still in the envelope, in perfect shape, and it is in inches on one side and metric. Now I do have one of these, but boy, if you've never used one of these, they are the handiest thing, so get yourself one. But I think those cost, if you had to buy it from Sterrett, about $50. So. That's, that's what was in that box that made it worth bidding on. Otherwise, I certainly wouldn't have bid on, on that junk. Now, this is something that 
a man paid ten dollars for this box and he took a couple of things out and he says do you want the rest of this and I said well yeah, yeah. how much five bucks so for five bucks I think I got cheated but there's a 12 millimeter craftsman some tip cleaners uh, this is a spark plug re-threader several peeler gauges flints more feeler gauges, they're the offset type. I kind of like, those were for setting tappets, I think. Used to do that when I was in my prime. Another one. So we have some of those, all kinds of General Motors uh, fuses. And that really is it. And a magic marker that still works. Down to the final two boxes. There's an old canteen or mess kit or something. Bionic wrench. I'm sure that's good. There's a nice Utica pliers. That's good. That's a nice player. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's a magnet. Here is a gadget. 18 inch combination square. Probably okay for carpentry. Here's another one of those magnets. Those might be handy. And a flashlight that flexes. I'm sure it doesn't work. Old ball peen hammer, possibly a good screwdriver. One of those. Basin wrench. Dunlap pliers, that's not much. Now, again, I'm going to have to ask you why would somebody keep a broken zigzag ruler? Rhetorical question, another eighth inch, brand new. More old screwdrivers. Uh, there's a nice flare wrench, Craftsman, 5 8 and 11 16. And why are there several pieces of high speed steel in there? I do not know. A few good things in that box, but not much. That's a dandy. I don't want that. Don't know what that is here. Stare it. Probably that's used. Probably no good. People run those too fast and ruin them. Wow, there's. I didn't know that was in there. There's some nice taps, three eighths, maybe even half inch size, used, but a bunch of them. All right, that was worth the price of admission. Now there's a combination square. I do not see a name on it. It looks fairly high quality. It's not stare it. It's not probably Craftsman, possibly. I'll see if it fits on that other blade. I don't know. There's a center head without a screw. Another center head. That, that matches up with that. Yeah, pretty good stone. Norton. Another center head. Don't know what brand it is, but it's not sterile. But the reason I bought this box was because of this little double square and uh, it's very similar to the Sterrett that I have but in fact it's a Lufkin and I absolutely adore Lufkin tools so that's nice. Some odd stamps and hey you know how I you know how I don't like these and I got I still think I got several of them but that's the first time I've ever seen the directions for using one of those general type drill sharpeners. Here's a gun telling you how to taper turn. I've never seen that chart. So that concludes uh, this video, this auction video. Hope you enjoyed it. It ran a little long. Uh, the original purpose of course was to show you that lathe and uh, if you looked at that little clip that I had on that lathe it did sell for $450. I really had to put my hands in my pockets so that I wouldn't bid on it, but 
if if it was if it sold for four fifty, that doesn't mean I would have got it for five. So you know, it could have been seven, eight. Uh, but anyway, I and I didn't want another Craftsman lathe. So, but the reason I did that was to show you how many lathes are for sale here in the Midwest. I run across one like that probably every two or three months. Uh, a small one that you could use at home, put in your basement. So that, anyway, that concludes the video. Hope you liked it. Be sure and watch my other videos. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.